The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has declared Los Angeles County the homeless capital of the nation. The number of homeless people now living there is approaching 35,000 men, women, and children. Federal statistics report that on any given night, there are at least 250,000 Americans sleeping in our streets. Advocates for the homeless claim that there may be as many as three million Americans who experience homelessness during a given year. And these people are considered by many to be lazy, crazy, drunk, or doped. People whose only hope lies with government agencies or charitable organizations. But in March of 1985, 63 homeless individuals united to form a self-sufficient alternative community. Justice Bill, located in Los Angeles downtown Skid Row, emerged as a response to unbearable conditions in overcrowded shelters and unsafe, transient hotels. With the consent of the owner, and by paying a dollar a month lease, the people of Justiceville organized to take control of their own lives. Occasional donations of food and water were given to the community. Those who had money bought food and shared it with others. Constructing makeshift houses, they began to create plans to get people off the street and reintegrated into society. As Justiceville became a reality, former minister Ted Hayes emerged as a natural spokesperson. Justiceville is a uh, community of homeless people have spontaneously come together and have discovered that we have a model uh, or a concept to present to the governments and to the public uh, on how to shelter homeless people, and how to care for ourselves and get us out of skid row, out of homelessness, or at least to make the best out of a bad situation. My name is Robert, you know, and, and I, I've been here for about, I'll say, about four months, and uh, this, is a, this is a pretty good place, and uh, I feel safe here. You know, I, I would rather stay here than most of the, of the hotels and stuff. Now you're going to get a first-hand look at Justiceville. Right now we have a lot of shacks around here. Well, we're trying to uh, build this place up, Justiceville. We're trying to build it up and, you know, to make a, a way for the house the homeless. Well, me and him, we uh, built this house. Uh, he was living over, over there in the corner, and, and I was living on the other side, and we just wanted to get away from everybody. So we just said, so I got this crazy idea about building this on top of everybody's house. So we just built it. And it's, it's pretty sturdy, you, you know, we're, yeah. we're on well, top of every, everybody. <laughs> but, now, but now I moved out, and I went to this house over, over here, though. But this is still from my house. You think so? What we're seeing today is a dramatic shift in the composition of the homeless population. For example, we know, based on a national survey, that 28% of the homeless population nationally is composed of families with children. As a generalization, the homeless today are younger, better educated, and disproportionately non-white. In Los Angeles, I found in my own research that 47% of the homeless men were veterans of the U.S. military service. Women in Skid Row uh, who have been there very long are usually much more troubled and much more likely to be mentally disabled than men by virtue of the fact that if you have any talent at all, any ability to cope, you're the last place in the world you want to be as a woman is in Skid Row. I've never met a homeless woman in Skid Row who hadn't been raped. Uh, usually it happens within a couple of days. Um, so
so uh, I, I would say whatever, whatever, whatever you can say about life for men in Skid Row is a hundred times worse uh, for women. Over 30,000 homeless people in L.A. It's the number one city where the homeless stay. No jobs, no ride, no bed, no, no frills. frills. So we started up a shelter called Justiceville. Got the nod from the owner of a vacant lot to put the plywood, cardboard shelters up. Took pride in the property and made it work. You got to stop that skin row curse. Justice. 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 Okay, it's a little bit. But if everybody does a significant little bit, we can bit alleviate else. this sure. problem, man. That's it. Why make you carry the ball all by yourself? That's it. Or why make him carry the ball? Or why make the city carry the ball? Or why make the county carry the ball? Yeah. Or why, why don't everybody get into it a little bit? The residents of Justiceville tried to make their community conform to city health codes. They installed portable toilets donated by commercial sanitation companies. By organizing around issues like the need for sanitation, the people demonstrated their ability to solve an immediate problem. Tell your friends, you got your friends coming here. I mean, I'm talking about visitors to come in here. They're being here. You might as well tell them now. Tell your friends, hey, this is yours. Now, they, might, they might come in here and might write all over it because they got some place to go. So you let them know, hey, don't do that. It's not cool. If we can make this justice bill live with what we just did here and other things that are happening, we can get toilets and jobs, put showers. showers all over the area, and the people on the outside and your friends will thank you for doing it. And the next couple weeks or so, the policy committee in Justiceville is going to start finding out who in here is being productive, helping Justiceville to live, and they're going to find out who's just getting a free ride in loafing. Those who are getting a free ride in loafing are going to be asked to leave. So you're going to have to start doing some serious things. Okay, all right, so let's, let's be thankful. We've got toilets. We don't have to crap like this anymore. We don't have to stand on the wall, you know. No more of that, huh? Right. There's nothing like this. It's Skid Row. We got it. Hey. 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 And give God thanks. Give the Lord thanks, huh? Come on. Eat. One of the most valuable things I saw in Justiceville was the fact that it was a group of homeless individuals who came together to form a community, to form a uh, sort of a surrogate family. And there was, there was a spirit of cooperation and, and support for one another down there. It provided not only a, a safe haven in a very, very dangerous area where they were at, but it also provided a feeling of belonging. Another thing that Justice Phil, I think, did that was unique was to give people heart, to give them the sense that there was caring still in the earth. Because one of the main things I see in not only the mentally ill homeless, but the non-mentally ill homeless, is the feeling that society has abandoned them and that there is no hope. And I think that Ted and Justice Bill were able to do that. And they were able to do it in the, in the unique way by making them help themselves. Cutbacks in programs for the mentally ill have increased the number of America's homeless. Approximately one third of the homeless population suffers from a severe form of mental illness. The condition of homelessness itself causes significant depression and anxiety. Justice. Bill is an open door alternative to the mission floor. Preservative of self-respect. Oh, we know that it's not perfect yet. But FIFA allow oh, justice bill. bill. The whole situation is overkill. No room for us in the welfare line. Justice Bill is a sign of the time. Sign of the time. Sign of the time. <laughs>